3, 3.3 is about as good as I can get. <coughs> Have you saw anything? Uh, yeah, so for Typhoon, there's a bunch Down there is the tornado, I think it is. Um, part of. <coughs> Excuse me. Board force. Um, escorting dinghies in. Uh, there's been one in since I've been in. Um, I think there's another boat that could be going out to intercept dinghies. So, yeah, uh, seven day TikTok ban. Uh, left these snowflakes at it. Um, what's the TikTok appeal ban? Uh, don't know how. Pretty sure they've not sat there and watched the live and gone, oh yeah, that was said. Um, yeah, I kind of reached the stage now where it's like people just treat us to their own country, really, aren't they? Um, sad, sad times. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of work. Obviously, I'm not going to be live streaming tonight because I've been banned. Um, so I'm still going to do some recording. Just won't be um, where we are. So I'm going to see if we can get a bit closer. So I can pull it in a little bit, can I? There we go. I don't think I'll be able to get in much more because it just start distorting.
this uh, immigrant's weight for that buster. This is literally unmarked cars and vans coming up. So let's go follow these vehicles. So I assume this is going to Manston. Oh, there's there's a there's a coach coming as well. So this is a big operation, like yeah, the amount of vehicles being um, put on for this is is pretty substantial really. We're going to come back round, follow the coach because I think, well, the coach is empty. I think, is it? I don't know. I can't tell. We've got no money to pay for um, old age pensioners. Um, but we've got plenty of money to pay for people coming in illegally. <laughs> it's nuts, isn't it? Absolutely nuts. So I don't know if this is just going back to Manston and it's empty or if there's actually people on this bus or not I'm not too sure what I do know is there's a lot of undercover border patrol force here um, so the other the other little coach had um, a vehicle with it in situ um, this coach doesn't, but I couldn't see if there's people on the coach or whether the coach is returning. I'm not too sure. So anyway. So there's a good chance <coughs> if I'm following these vehicles, um, I could be getting followed following them, which sounds really kind of confusing, but yeah, you get the idea. So I assume it's going to Manston. can't see the other one. Oh, no, that's not it. <coughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think there's actually anybody on it. I think I've messed up in the sense of maybe I should have waited it out. Oh 
shit, this guy's going pretty fast. heating off so yeah I'm sorry if there's any uh, static noise coming from the vehicle I've got one of the windows open so <coughs> oh, broken down camper van Manston Airport um, vehicle like a transit van with uh, Border Force Police or the police I don't know if it's Border Force or the police but there was definitely a police presence um, at the port as we saw Then from Ramsgate, within 24 to 48 hours, they'll then be dispersed to wherever they're being dispersed to. Um, anywhere across the country, I suppose. I'm not really sure why this bus has got a 100 mile an hour bus tag on it. Fifteen miles left. This would generally be the view that detained immigrants or illegal subjects will travel. I would imagine the bus has got comms. And I don't know if that's a police bike which just come out of the junction or not. But yeah, certain people being transported seem to have a different level of security. So it's 14 miles to Manston Airport. <clears throat> 25 minutes. If, if, that's where we're actually going, I don't know. I'm kind of assuming. <sighs> Hoping I don't lose the coach yet. Oh, 
Not there we go. Alright. Let's see if we're going to Manston Airport. So I think the way this works is people come from uh, primarily what seems to be Afghanistan, Sudan and such like countries into Europe all the way to France um, get in a dinghy once you're in the dinghy get halfway across the channel about 10 miles then, uh, then it's, it's a handover French, French authorities all hand or escort the dinghies to the English side of the channel, then they'll be picked up. Get across, get processed. How that process works, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I was speaking to somebody and it's like they do background checks and I suppose by the background checks determines whether they get put on a coach or a thirty miles left. <clears throat> Just coming up to a roundabout here. So I suppose the taxpayers paying for this whole service um, you know crimes are not getting solved um, less and less police in the communities but um, there was no I mean after I've looked back at the footage but there was at least um, eight to ten officers that attended to the port to actually transport um, these illegal subjects. So we've got 12 miles left, 18 minutes approximately, 1.8 miles on this stretch. Um, the roads are clear on this side, it's just me and the coach. Um, but I did notice the smaller minibus had um, a police convoy, unmarked police car, um, following it. So I'm not sure if that means that the people that are being put on the smaller minibuses and escorted with a police convoy have got convictions or not. I'm not sure how that works, but I would assume that's what that's what this story is there. I mean, what actually happens to the people that have got convictions? Like, how does that work? <clears throat> I mean, I suppose you could ask. I mean, obviously it's logical that, that you kind of check that they have got criminal convictions, but then what? What happens if you have? So obviously, uh, 
Scampton being one of the centres they wanted to use to house migrants. Um, was maybe a bit like Manston. Probably not, I suppose, because from all accounts, Manston is, is a processing centre. But I would imagine it's still got doctors on sites and stuff. Not too sure. I mean, it's not like we can just walk in there and have a look. <coughs> 10 miles. 16 minutes left. Um, still no vehicles behind, mate. Just the coach in front. <laughs> that was the bike went past the earlier one. <laughs> So we're good for batteries. I've got two batteries. Um, the mics are fully charged. Down to 9.3 miles. We should arrive at 10 to 4. I think we'll be doing a left, left, left at the roundabout. I mean, he seems to be hesitant to indicate it. Yeah, there we go. So it's left. Yeah, this is the first time that I've kind of, I've, I've spent a couple of days at the uh, Western Heights uh, watching the typhoon and the hurricane. <clears throat> um, both these ships are, somebody said they're from Ramsgate, I, I, maybe they are. Um, I'm certainly not a marine expert, but I have watched and these are the two ships that are intercepting the dinghies uh, on a daily basis um, I mean I don't know how many they're intercepting per day but I think the numbers vary I guess there's some factors that kind of play into that for weather for one um, Well, I suppose, I suppose the, the, the weather is the biggest part. Um, the calm of the sea is. Um, the, the more boats that try to come across, I suppose. <coughs> but one, one thing I noticed, or, or one thing that I've not seen because I've only got the uh, DJI camera now. One thing that I'm not seeing is is the dinghies actually coming into the country. Um, so I've not seen any of the dinghies coming into the port as such. Um, so I'm not sure if they're being intercepted and then they board the Typhoon or the other boat, um, the Hurricane, 
and something else is towing um, the dinghies, I don't know. Or the dinghies are being <coughs> um, put onto the ship. Um, certainly a question I'm going to ask, though. So I suppose whoever runs this bus company must be doing all right with, looks like a private plate. The Mercedes Turismo. Pretty much looks like a luxury bus to me. Um, don't know the last time I saw many pensioners going on the luxury bus. So we're down to seven miles, 12 minutes. So he didn't, um, he didn't give me a blink there to thank me. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure um, the bus is aware that I've been coming from Dover. I mean, I'm assuming that, but well, he's just not a very polite bus driver. Absolutely stinks. Stinks of like sewage. Like human faces. It's disgusting. So we're on 10 minutes, 5.7 miles. Should arrive at just gone 10 to. I don't know how that works because it's all oh, right. It's my watch is my watch is fast apparently. Five miles. It's a little um, track type there, so like, which is kind of good because it means the coach can't kind of speed off as 
as long as it's following the uh, tractor in situ. <clears throat> so we'll be doing a left, left up here. I assume. Well, there's two left, so there's a. So 1.5 miles, then I think we take the third roundabout to the Sandwich Road. Maybe it's not going left. Right, sorry. Um, three, three point one miles. Waz says it. Waz says to go right, but maybe the bus is not going to Manston. Maybe, or maybe there's another route. I don't know. I'm starting to think maybe the bus is not going to Manston. So we can go left, but it's added an extra mile one, so yeah, I'm not too sure. Maybe the bus is not going to Manston. Now that'll kind of suck. Because it means I've essentially followed a dud fucking bus. Um, yeah, bus park. Oh no. Okay, 1.6 1, 1. miles, Minster Road. Um, I'm not sure if that's part of Manston Airport. What I do know is now I'm falling a bit behind because these guys are zipped in front. It's all good, as long as we're keeping up. If he doesn't do it right up here, then then I guess he's not going to Manston, and he's going wherever the bus parks up. Um, yep, going right, 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 which would be the anticipated turn I would have took. 
so much for saving the planet, he's done an extra mile. <laughs> yeah, he's going right. Okay, so I've got this Volvo in front of me. I'm just hoping I can get out before any cars come round. We're good. So we're going right, right, past McDonald's. Then we're going left onto Minster Road. Then we're going right. So it's 2.1 miles away. Now he's not indicating, but he's going to have to go right. There we go. It's a late indicator, isn't it? There we go. So there we are on the left at <coughs> Manston Airport. How, how much does this cost on on a daily basis? What I mean by that is like, you know, they're, they're obviously contracting in companies to run these coaches um, for manpower, for bus drivers, the police, border force. Um, all, all these resources To allow people to come in the country that shouldn't even be here, um, you know, e economically. Um, I was discussing this with somebody earlier on. You know, like if you're an average working family, like how could you ever put the money together? Um, how could you put the money together to get a franchise for, say, um, one of the franchises out there? Um, without mentioning any names, um, you couldn't. Like on the wages that the average working class are making, you could not afford to go and buy a franchise. So where, where does this money come from? These are the questions I want to know. Where does the money come from for when these people end up here? Where, where are they getting the money to um, pay for... Um, these barber shops. Who's funding all this stuff? Who's paying the two thousand pounds for him to get in the dinghy? Um, yeah. You know they say they say that um, people arranging the dinghies, um, it, it's organised crime. So why why is it not being treated as crime? Why are we normalising somebody entering the country illegally? as if that's normal when clearly it's not so here we go RAF Manston the um, history museum so there's a bus going left up here or what I don't know Oh, that, that looked like... That looked like part of the Manston thing on the left there. I saw security back there. So... I don't, I don't know why the bus is coming this way. 
Okay, he's going left. What's this? Is this... This is like a storage place. I don't know. Self storage. Oh. So the bus comes into here. Huh, interesting. Secure storage vault. So I guess the um Oh, okay. Caravans, motorhomes, so it's secure storage. So <clears throat> I don't know if that means there's a secure way into Manston down that way, or that's where the bus is going to park up. Not sure. Anyway, we'll keep going back. Because I did see security down here on the right. Um, wasn't this one. So I'm going to move my microphone over a bit so he doesn't notice my microphone. Drive up to the gate. And... Uh, what security say. I think I think it was on the right here, was it? Uh, maybe not. Maybe it was it? No. So I'm just going to let the police car come past first. <clears throat> That's an ambulance, okay. So there's an ambulance coming out of here. Medical services. Yeah. Quick question. Yeah, go on. How many people get brought here on a daily basis? No idea, mate. No idea. Rough. Really average numbers. That's, that's number-wise, somewhere down in the offices. Right. At, at, at many, what's the capacity of the place? Sorry. Appreciate it. No worries. Have a good day, yeah? Thank you. <coughs> so. Yeah, uh, that guy seems like this is the security processing centre. Oh, a lot, a lot of people here. A lot, a lot of people. Big security presence. So, Have a look here, see what's going on. 
Okay. I'm not sure what the helicopter is all about. So yeah. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, that's the coach journey from um, Dover to the iconic Manston Airport. Uh, I say iconic because uh, same story, our heritage. Um, all being violated, really. I, I consider it violated, um, steeped in history and whatnot. Um, yeah, so we're going to go back to Dover, um, see what we can see.